Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Going through a variety of stuff which could actually make this one of the most important videos you have ever clicked on. Whether you make it to the end of this video or not, we're going to cover some extremely important information related to these end times. You probably caught wind of some of it in the title or the description of this video. But I promise you, the contents of this video is going to overwhelm you with information. So, be sure to hit that like button. Be prepared to leave comments as we go. And after you see how much information is in this video and how important it is, go ahead and share this video. There's many different ways you can share it. You can share it on Facebook, Twitter. You know all the different ways you have access to share this video. So do just that. But before we get to the covenant angel, I want to show you over here in Malachi chapter 4. This is the last book in the Old Testament. The last chapter in the Old Testament. And I want to bring your attention to the last three verses in the Old Testament. It's talking about Elijah. We've recently been doing several classes on Elijah and particularly the Elijah spirit. This Elijah spirit is going to play a key role in the tribulation. And even after the tribulation, this Elijah spirit is going to come down and dwell with several individuals, at least 144,000 individuals before we get to the end of the tribulation. The Elijah spirit is the force behind the 144,000, the two witnesses. We've done several classes on Elijah and we got more to go. So hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Ring that bell so you can see when those classes come out. But we see right here in verse 4, he says, Remember the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto you in Horeb for all Israel, the statutes and the judgments. Now, the first time we see the word Horeb in the Bible is in Exodus chapter 3. This is the story of Moses when he met the burning bush. That's where the burning bush was, is on Mount Horeb. The next time we see Horeb is over there in chapter 17. This is the same mountain that Moses smote to get water out of, to get water out of the rock. This is not the time he got in trouble. This is the time he was actually told to smite the rock. You see there in Exodus chapter 17 and verse 6. Now this is some important stuff right here in these few verses out of Deuteronomy chapter 18. You see in verse 15 he's talking about how he's going to raise up a prophet in the midst of you. Now, we learned in the Third Testament of the Bible that there have been no prophets, no legitimate prophets, since 1950. So what does that mean when he says he's going to raise up a prophet in the midst of us? He's talking about the spirit of Elijah. See where it says right there, like unto me? That should bring your mind to the transfiguration when Moses and Elijah met with the Messiah on Mount Tabor. He's telling us that in these end times that he's going to raise the Elijah spirit in the midst of us. This spirit will dwell in us. We're going to get to how here in just a second. Unto him ye shall hearken according to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in Horeb in the day of the assembly saying let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God neither let me see his great fire anymore so what is this talking about what is he telling him to hearken to he's telling him to hearken unto the information that he received on Mount Horeb and how do you know that it was at Mount Horeb that he's talking about right here he says that's the day that you told me to let me not hear again the voice of the Lord, lest I die. Now here, over here, you see this story played out. That was in Deuteronomy. This is over back here in the book of Exodus. We're up here in Exodus chapter 20, and verse 19 says, And thou said unto Moses, 
And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear, but let not God speak with us, lest we die. This all happened at the bottom of Mount Horeb. And so what was going on in chapter 20? We come back up here to the top. And we see this is the beginning of the book of the covenant. We received the covenant at Mount Horeb. You see there it starts off with the Ten Commandments. This all took place at Mount Horeb. So when we look back over here at Malachi, when it says, Remember ye the law of Moses my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all of Israel. With the statutes and the judgments. You have the commandments right here in the first part of chapter 20. When you look at chapter 21, you see these are the judgments. The statutes are in here as well. This book goes all the way over through chapter 23. You can see it's about to wrap up. This is the book of the covenant. It's about to wrap all the way up in chapter 24. At the beginning of chapter 24, when it says down here in verse 7, And he took the book of the covenant and read it in the audience of the people. And they said, All that the Lord has said will we do and be obedient. This is the book of the covenant, Exodus chapter 21, all the way up through chapter 23, even the first seven verses of chapter 24. Where in chapter 24, you just have those individuals saying that they are in complete and total agreement with what the Father has told them they will do in the covenant. This is the same covenant that we're in now. This is the old covenant. When you think about the new covenant, this is the old covenant. This is what's talked about over there in the book of Hebrews, chapter 8 and verse 7, when he talks about the first covenant. The first covenant was not faultless because the first covenant was written down on paper. There were several individuals that didn't get the opportunity to see that paper. Well, the new covenant is going to be written on our hearts and there will be no excuses. Everybody will have the covenant seared into our consciousness. And what covenant is it going to be? The same covenant, the same laws that we were given over there in Exodus. But now let me show you something very important over here in chapter 23. You see right here where he says, Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. This is at the end of the covenant and he's telling us when we obey this covenant, he will send his angel in order to help bring us through the tribulation, will help bring us into the promised land, will help bring us into New Jerusalem, will help bring us into the third temple. All of these events which we are saying could actually take place here after the seventh of Av. Here in about 30 days or less. Depends on when you're watching this video. And see, this is why we're sure to tell you guys about the parable of the laborers. Because some of you are just now hearing about this covenant. Well, if you understand that parable of the laborers, you're probably anxious to get in and start reading this covenant. So you can start preparing for this covenant angel to come and help you. You see all these events happening in 2020 and it seems to be escalating. Well, it should be real easy to understand that you might want to take advantage of this help that's being offered over here by way of this covenant angel. But let me jump back over here to Malachi and show you something really important. All right, looking back here, chapter four, uh, verse four is telling us to remember the law of Moses, the covenant given by Moses on Horeb. With the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments. And look what happens down here. In verse 5 he says, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So what we're understanding, if we obey the commandments, then we should start to see this Elijah spirit. Now is there a connection between the covenant angel and Elijah and the Elijah spirit? Let's look over here. At the previous chapter, chapter 3 of Malachi, 
Verse 1 says, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom ye seek. A messenger is another name for an angel. This whole chapter is talking about the covenant angel and leading us to chapter 4, which is talking about Elijah. After we read the book of Malachi, it should be easy to understand that the Elijah spirit is the covenant angel. That angel promised to us to help lead us through the tribulation. If we obey the covenant, when we obey the covenant. You look and he says, and the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant. This is the third temple that he's talking about. That temple that will be built on our hearts. The new covenant. New Jerusalem. The messenger of the covenant. That's that same angel that's being talked about over here in Exodus chapter 23. He says, beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not. For he will not pardon your transgressions. For my name is in him. Now, my wife brought something to my attention the other day, something she was working on or something that touched her heart is how you spell the word Elijah. Maybe you guys can help us out in the comments section, but the way you spell Elijah is E-L-I-J-A-H. That's how we spell Elijah. But we understand that this is an English word because the J did not even exist before the year 1611. It wasn't even a letter until the Bible came out when they replaced the letter I with the letter J. And so the correct spelling of this word should have been looked more like that. Now some of you guys who are into Hebrew, help us out in the comments section because you understand what the word E-L means. That's why all of the angels, at least most of them, had E-L at the end of their name, like Guy... Like Gabriel and Michael and Phineel and Raphael. And then we understand Yah to point to our father. And that I believe is what he's talking about when he says for my name is in him. El Yah. You look right here before we leave here it says but if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak. Then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thy adversaries. And 23 is talking about how he's going to go to bring us into the promised land. Well, guys, you may have to go ahead and watch this video again. As you can see, we've presented you with a lot of information. Don't forget to leave comments. Hit that like button and share this video. But I believe we're going to go ahead and wrap this up here. May our Heavenly Father bless you and keep you. May our Heavenly Father make His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May our Heavenly Father lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. And so be it.